Leadership Center's group study. Mm -hmm. We are absolutely honored to have you. Go on, get your Bibles, get you some paper, get you something to write with as we come together for a group study to break the word of life. I am Dr. Joycelyn Yvonne Parnell Henderson, and this is my husband as well as pastor, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Walter Henderson III, and we're some of the senior leaders over at Berean Family Worship Center. And we are grateful to have you a part of this live stream for the group study. Uh, if you're desiring to follow along with us, you can do just that by going into the website of BerenFamilyWorshipCenter.org. And right on that inspirational corner, you can click and you can get the download for whatever device that you have uh, for uh, the group study notes. Uh, this is the third lesson, and the title of it is idolatry mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. deception of the heart is the series and the title for this lesson is idolatry gonna ask if you would go on get your bibles and we're gonna go right into the word psalms 113 verse 5 is the opening scripture and i'm gonna read that and then pray that back uh, in the lord's ear and into your hearing as we prepare our hearts to receive the engrafted word of God. That is the only thing that's able to save a sin sick soul. My Jesus. So reading that out of the King James Version again, Psalms 113 verse 5, and it says, Who is like unto the Lord our God? That's enough right there to just go on and close it up. And... <laughs> the one that dwelleth upon high. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Father, we just thank you thank and you. we do delight this evening to be in your presence. In your presence is a fullness of joy. Yes. In your presence is sanctification, wholeness, wellness, and soundness. Everything that we need as born-again believers is found in your presence. Uh, we thank you for those that are gathering. We ask that you would open our ears that we might hear the engrafted word of God. And those that do not know Jesus, mm -hmm. that they will hear a sound coming from heaven saying even this time that as they join, that they will make a commitment to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Thank you for what you will do in and through this broadcast. Mm -hmm. We say you have the freedom now to use us as your instruments. Uh, that we might uh, preach, teach, walk out, obey, as well as to trust in, in your word. We can trust you explicitly because we know that your word and you are one. Mm -hmm. So we can trust your word because we know that your word and you are one. Mm -hmm. So because you and the word are one, we trust you with our whole heart. We Thank trust you, you with you. everything that would take place on this live stream. Mm -hmm. We say even now that you are the governor. Your word declares that in Psalms 22 verse 28 that you govern the entire nations. And we say we give you right now free course to govern the entire nations. Even as David said, and he asked the question in Psalms 113 and 5, who is like the Lord? Mm -hmm. And we ask the question, but we give a, dis a resounding declaration. Nobody, nowhere, no time, no situation is anyone like unto our God. No one can do us like Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I do declare that right now. And I say, Lord God, that you have shown up in the midst of this that we might be your instruments for your service. Use us that we might uh, do the exploits in the kingdom of God. Use that, those that were gathered that they would encourage one another that as iron sharpened and iron will be uh, the end of the course of what it is that we're doing. We thank you that you are Jehovah God. Thank you. You are the all-wise God. You are the self-sufficient God. Yes, Hallelujah. You are Jehovah Shalom. And we thank you for being our peace. Oh, you're God. You are our Jehovah Nissi. Yes. Your banner over us is love. Praise Hallelujah. God. Spread your love banner over us so that we can walk in agape mm -hmm. and that we can love one another even as Christ loved the church mm -hmm. and Father gave himself for it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That we would give ourselves for one another and it won't seem burdensome. Who can be compared to you? None. Mm -hmm. None. Nowhere. Yes. I declare that right now. There is nobody, no man, no woman, no situation, no job, no car, no automobile. Nothing can, can be compared to our God because you're the glory and the lift of our head. Mm -hmm. You are a shield and a buckler. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, you uh, that knew no sin became sin for us, a sin offering mm -hmm. that we might have the righteousness of God. We have been made to be righteous. Yes. And we come to Thank sit you. in your presence Thank knowing that it's not our righteousness. Mm -hmm. It's not our will, 
but thy will be done. Hallelujah. And we thank you that your will will be done the same as it is in heaven, the same thing in the earth. Now we say the kingdom folks are, are set and we're waiting to hear what the spirit of the living God will say. Speak, yes. Holy Ghost. Yes. We're waiting to hear. Right. And not only that we'll be a hearer of the word, but our feet will put uh, also action to the word of God that we will hear. And we say thank you in advance. And we even now declare that you are God over every situation mm -hmm. and you rule supreme. Now that you will use us now individually and collectively, that your name will be magnified, that your name will be glorified mm -hmm. and you will be praised. You, we speak even now, salvations will come through the preach word. And we thank you right now mm -hmm. that you will do it for your, your glory, your honor and your praise. We bless you in mm -hmm. no other name but your son, Jesus. Amen. Praise amen God. and amen. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. It's on you, Pastor. All righty. Hallelujah. Glory to our Well, bless the Lord. And again, one more time. Praise yeah. the Lord. That's the Lord has allowed us. Together one <laughs> more time. Praise yes, God. Yes, Lord. We don't know anything about tomorrow, but we have the day. Thank you, Lord. And therefore, we will rejoice and be glad in yes. this day. Praise bless God bless forevermore. Him. All right, Sister Henderson is giving you our lesson series here. And again, our lesson three, uh, idolatry here. And so if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, the 10th verse. 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, and the 10th verse, we will read our lesson text for this evening. And uh, we're going to trust God that he's going to speak something to each one of us. Praise God. And uh, starting there at 1 Samuel. 15th chapter, and we're starting there at verse 10. Amen. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. Come on. For he is turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord. Mm. All night. We. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up a place and has gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgad. Mm. Verse 13, and Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou, the Lord. I have performed... <laughs> The commandment of the Lord. And Samuel yes. said, What mean it then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep <laughs> and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Mm -hmm. Then Samuel said unto him, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has Come said on. to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. <laughs> and Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? Mm -hmm. And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. Verse 18, And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Mm. Wherefore did thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but this fly up on the spoil, my goodness, and this evil in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Saul said unto him, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, <laughs> and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took up the spoil. Come on, blame chief and oxen, The <laughs> chief of the thing which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God and Gilgad. And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey Come on. is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of ram. Mm -hmm. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Really? And stubbornness is <laughs> as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee mm. from being king. 
And Samuel said, and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Yes, Father, thank, thank you for you your Lord. word. Thank you. Thank you that you're causing us to hear, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the living God is declaring to us this day. And Father, that we might embrace your word, mm -hmm. we might Holy Spirit embrace the very Spirit of the living God to do what you've called us to do in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Let me start with my notes like I normally do here. <laughs> in our lesson text, the Lord reveals that obedience is supreme over everything else that we can offer him. Come on. That includes our worship, our tithing, our prayers, our gifts, and so on. Other than confessing our disobedience, uh, disobedience, our prayers are hindered because of our disobedience. Psalm 66, 18 said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. First mm -hmm. John 3, 21 said, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Saul allowed his fear to dominate his thoughts. Fear of the current situation. Come on. And fear of man. The word of the Lord spoken through Samuel had not changed. When the word was spoken, God already knew this Saul, what Saul would be facing. Mm -hmm. This test would reveal the true nature of Saul's faith. Was his faith rooted in God? Or was his faith or would his faith change? depending on the situation. Let me read that again. Was his faith rooted in God? Mm. Because, again, God already knew what Saul was going to face. Yeah. When God gave us a word, we come up, well, I didn't know this was going to happen. God said, I did. That word I gave you was still word. The word that God gave uh, back to Jesus, the word that they gave to the apostle they wrote, will still work for us. Yeah, well, same God. Somehow we think, well, this is a different time. This, <laughs> God give us a word. He's speaking spiritual laws and spiritual principles mm -hmm. that, that may God. Now, the circumstances may be this or that, but as long as we don't violate the principle, it'll work in any situation. Yeah, will. Amen, amen, amen. And so when the word was spoken, God already knew what Saul would be facing. This test would reveal the true nature of Saul's faith. Was his faith rooted in God mm -hmm. or would his faith change depending on the situation? What about you and me? Does our faith change depending on our situation? Come on. Or is our faith <laughs> grounded in God and in his word? Samuel equates rebellion with witchcraft and stubbornness with idolatry. We. If Saul wasn't faithful in the least of God's commandment, he could not be trusted with God's true riches. Yes, thank you, Father. Lord have mercy. Help us, Lord. There's some time that we need to understand that this situation that God is allowing to test us. We talked about that this past <laughs> Sunday with our message. We talked about that, that our faith may be tried and come forth as pure gold. Praise God. In a situation, we focus on people, and our focus should always be on the Lord mm -hmm. and on the Word. And what is the Holy Spirit saying to me? Is the Holy Spirit standing for me to do something or stop doing something? Praise God. Well, if I don't trust God, I will keep trying to do those things. I will keep yeah. trying to fix things. I'll yeah. keep, and God is saying, this Word will work if you put your faith in mm -hmm. it. First of all, as we talked about this Sunday, we have to trust God. If we trust God, then we'll trust his word. All right? Yes, and you, because God and his word is one. That's exactly and right. We, we can't separate mm -hmm. God from his word. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's as if we think about God being up in heaven mm -hmm. and his word inside of a book. Mm -hmm. He is the book. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, we that's good to me. It he is, is the book. Yes. It's something very interesting in the book of Romans 10 because Paul now teaching him, he said, should we ask, go up to heaven and get God? Yeah. Or should we so go back we down to hell and pull him and get him up? In other words, do we need to do that to get God mm -mm. word to word? No. Or to get God to hear what we're saying? No, what saith thee? The word is nigh the thee yeah. in thy mouth and, and in, in thy, thy heart. heart. So in other words, God said, if you'll get the word in your heart and in your mouth, because that's how faith is developed. And again, mm -hmm. we'll be talking more about that this coming week on Sunday. But we need to really get an understanding of that knowing that God's word is the key. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And trusting God is essential. But if we don't get his word in us, then it's hard for us to have faith to believe God. And that's so key. I think, Pastor, what you just said, we have to get the word of God in us. Mm -hmm. And we take everybody else's word and take it as face value. We have to stop doing that and go and get God's word because God's word is the only thing that has been tested, tried, and settled. The word of God says settled in heaven. And so we got to settle it now in our, in our own hearts that God's word is truth. Uh, the word of God in John 17, 17 says it that way. And that's exactly what Jesus said to his disciples. Sanctify them through the truth. Mm -hmm. My word is truth. And his word isn't changed and he won't change. Amen. All right. Roman number one in your lesson there. Idolatry is anything we place before God. Now, in my lesson, I highlighted it and <laughs> underlined it. Idolatry, it again, idolatry is anything. We place before God. And so idolatry can be a multitude of different things. Sometimes things we don't even think about. But I did that for me to make sure I understand anything. Highlight it and underline it. Praise God. <laughs> Sometimes we can have things that we're not even considering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, again, there, when we said before God, that simply means I trust me. And this is what we find out about our soul. He trusted him more than he trust God. Mm -hmm. When we don't trust God again, well, let's go on. Praise God. So <laughs> now in A, uh, Roman number one, A, when anybody or anything get what's belong to God alone, we... it's called idolatry. B, when there is an excessive devotion or reverence to a person, an entity or a thing, mm -hmm. that is idolatry. Do you know that we can do that with almost anything? It can be yeah. our, with our car. It can be with our family. It can be with our children. They get what God should be getting. Mm -hmm. God is all right as long as, but if this comes first, God, I'm going to have to handle that first, and I'm going to do that differently. And I'm, that's when I said for all of us, it may be something Everyone. we're not even looking at. Yeah. And so when, when we study this, we, you know, we come with the Lord, help me. If there's something that I'm placing more than you, then I'm not trusting in you. I'm trusting either myself or that mm -hmm. thing. And so it's going to be very important. And to you, you know, as you're saying that, I was thinking about so often sometimes us as, especially the married uh, individuals, mm -hmm. um, we put more uh, trust and more hope and more confidence in a spouse. Mm -hmm. Now, I know God has called my husband to be the head, mm -hmm. but that's under Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, anytime we get that out of place and got it in the wrong priority, we, we almost get to the place where we, we become uh, a worshiper of that individual instead of what who God has said. He said, those that would worship me in spirit and truth, he is the only God that we ought to be doing that to. And as you mentioned, Mary, it's something very important. Many times we try to change our spouse mm -hmm. and make them to be what we think they ought to be. No. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just telling you, it happens to Sanders. It really does. Oh, it does. And it will happen to every one of us. Please don't look at your spouse and think you don't do that either. What happens with this is that we've prayed about it. We ask God to do something, and then we keep meddling with yeah. it. And God is saying, could you please move out the way? Be quiet. Uh, you, you, you are, I'm, I'm going to work on it, but you go in there and you keep stirring the pot. You keep it going. And God said, let me work on it. And he will do it, but... When we don't trust God, watch this, we trust ourselves more than mm -hmm. God, then that's idolatry. Yeah. yeah. Our, our faith is in us, not in God. Well, I, I God, you know, Lord, I trust you now. Ooh, I praise the Lord. But when I get to a certain area, right here, God, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to take the hell myself. That's idolatry, folks. Really? And so that's when I said, every one of us, if you're thinking that you can escape this, no, no, no. <laughs> And I, I'm not trying to. I want to acknowledge this, God, so that you can do it. We have to come to that place. That's hard for us to just be quiet at times. It's hard for us not to do things. And I don't care who we are, all right? Let's go on praise God. You know, when the Word of God in Proverbs says, in all our ways acknowledge Him. There you go. That means to bring Him on before we decide uh, anything that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Because even if we think that we you know, <laughs> studied all of it, we still need to acknowledge God yes. and ask Him. Yes. You know, uh, before they went to war, they would ask, ask the Lord, do I go up or do I stay? Mm -hmm. And we sometimes fail, and I say we, mm -hmm. fail to ask God in this season, in this hour, at this particular time. And maybe He would say go up next week, but it wasn't this week. And so uh, we have to wait until God give us the okay to do whatever it is that we're doing. 
And so a lot of times we don't want to acknowledge him. We don't want to bring him in on the front part of it because, you know, he might just say no. And, and we want to hear yes. One of the things when we look at our lesson text that happened, Saul then believed that Samuel had come at the time that he said. Mm -hmm. So what happens? He got anxious. But he went and he said, bring it. So he's stepping even out of his place of what he should be doing. And what he did is he put himself into place at that point. If God said, wait till the man of God come, then wait. Mm -hmm. If something, because I can trust God because I stay with his word. And so, uh, but he went and did, but not only that, when, when, when Samuel came, the Bible said he had went on to a certain, but he has set up some type of memorial. Mm, Lord help us. You are happy about something, about disobeying God's word. <laughs> you are patting your own self on the back. You know, and doing it, and God is saying, you know what? That's not the way it's going to work. God will allow you and me to be tested. Yeah, he will. He's going to allow <laughs> that, and we have to come to a place because what God wants to do is cause us to kill this flesh, and that we don't trust in that we are God and that we can do. We can't change ourselves. Uh, let's not trying to change somebody come else. On. It's just not going to happen. And so sometimes there's. Uh, uh, other people might not be saying anything it ain't because they don't see anything but you know what they pray about it and they're trusting God to do what they've asked God to do and that's what we have to do uh, Roman number 2 from the beginning God's covenant with Israel was to worship him alone Exodus 20 and 3 thou shalt have no other gods before me Deuteronomy 5 and 7 Thou shalt, thou shalt have none other gods before me. Now, there's a myriad of scriptures there. I just pulled something out. Mm -hmm. But God was saying, this thing is not going to work if you're having some other gods before come me. On. Even if that come God on, is yourself, on. it's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. And, and you're going to get frustrated and think, I don't care. I don't want to come. But you, I, I, I'm not going to compete with your God. Come on. Come on. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Either you're going to accept me so that I can be. God will not take second place to anything. He doesn't need to be. He's the creator of everything. Why would he be second to anything? Mm -hmm. Praise God. So he's not going to do that. We have to rest in the Lord. That's what he wants us to do. Get into that word. Stay in it meditate so that word can continue to control our thoughts. It can continue to help build our faith in that area. And be still and know yeah. that I'm God. Hallelujah. And you know, the Word of God talks about uh, God being a jealous God. Mm -hmm. And when we t even think about that, even in the natural ourselves, mm -hmm. if we thought that somebody else was uh, trying to do something with our spouses, our you know, our friends, mm -hmm. our whatever what we hold dear to our hearts, mm -hmm. We wouldn't sit back and just uh, well, say, you know, let it go. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. No, he is jealous over each one of us. He is. Praise and because God. of that jealous love, not jealous to the fact that of uh, what we see in the world today, mm -hmm. but jealous to the, to the fact, I don't want you having another God. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord God. I'm the one that came and hung at Calvary, got up for you. I don't want you having anyone else. And you don't have to. We don't. If we go on and serve him correctly. That's right. All other gods are not gods. They're dead, dumb, and confused. Yeah, and he's there. God saying that that's what people see them as, but mm -hmm. they are not. All right, 2A. Man was made to worship God. If we don't worship Jehovah, Come on. we will worship something. First of all, on the A, small a, mankind. While pleasing a person over pleasing God. Matthew 10, 37, 38 said, He that loveth fa uh, father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Come on. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is mm -hmm. not worthy mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. That's Matthew 10, 37 through 38. Now notice that he said, he talked about mother and father. He talked about our children. Praise God. So we can make our children idols. Yes, come on. We can make our parents idols. And so notice that 30th verse is saying, He that taketh not his cross. Why did he say, He that taketh not his cross? Because when you're going to make God first place in your life, there are some people going to get upset with you. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I, I love God too. I mean, we go to church and all that and all that. And, but you know what? I'm still a person. I'm, and people will not understand when you are letting God be first in your life. Now, God would not make me uh, him to be first in my life and cause me to not 
honor my wife, right. honor my, you know, love my children. That's not it. But there's sometimes there's choices you're going to make that's going to disappoint your children, going to disappoint your wife or your husband. There's things you're going to make that you, God, God, there's a test God is allowing you to do that. Guess what happened with Abraham? With that one son, he had been waiting on that. Mom. And God was not going to let him have that, that son and be an idol for him. I, I know you waited. I know you, this is the son of promise. This was a miracle. But you're not, we're not going to let that still mm -hmm. be ahead. And notice what God did. He took his only begotten son. I didn't love this son more than I love you. I was willing to let that son suffer so I can bring my other sons in. Wee. And so when we see that realization, God never tell us to do something that he doesn't do himself. That is so good. He sets the example. That's why every leader must set the example. Mm -hmm. We cannot be a leader if we're not willing to set the example. Not, we're not perfect example as Jesus was, as the Lord is, but we need to set our hearts to understand. Why would I ask people to do something I'm not going to do? Why do you understand? And we are here in the body of Christ to serve one another. We can only do that effectively by allowing God to be first place in our life. Yeah. So that that agape love is flowing in us and through us. And so that's very important. All right. Now, let's look at under uh, Roman number two, a uh, let's talk about causes now, because we're talking about that. If we can't worship something else more than God causes doing things that are called for in scriptures, but ignoring the priority of other scriptures. Now, Satan came to Jesus and said, you know, and he quoted the scripture to him and what he should do. And Jesus said, wait a minute, there's another script here. And Jesus quoted the script to balance that to make sure we understand that. There are people that have certain causes that, that I'm doing this for the Lord and I'm do, doing these things for the Lord. And, and But there's other scripture God said you need to do these things. And therefore, if you're doing this and it's out of place or listen, it's, it's higher than doing the other thing. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this, but I'm not going to pay any attention to my wife and to my children and all Come that. What, what, uh, okay, that causes maybe good what you're doing. So that's the thing God tell you to do. In other words, I'm being a pastor, but I'm still a husband and I'm still mm -hmm. a father to my children. Amen? Or I got this thing, I'm going to do this and, and I ain't got time with all of that and, I'm, and for a whole month I'm just going to have to ignore y'all. and whatever. <laughs> You know, it, in other words, there's causes we can have. And that we uh, have these causes, and this is more important right now. And there's causes you can have, and I don't need to go to church. You know, and, well, well that, that ain't what the scripture said. Amen? He, and that comes to my next one, ideas. Yeah. I haven't been called to join a local church, but to go and visit different churches to encourage them. Help us, Father. That's out of order. Why? What did the Lord said, for the sake not to assemble yourself together. God plants the solitary within family. Mm -hmm. God... Once we learn, let me tell, let me go back to this, and we we talk about this part of our class about the government of the kingdom. First of all, God uses the family, your local house, your family as a watch it, a microcosm of what the church should be. That's why we call each other brothers and sisters, and we got father. There. Paul said that uh, you know you, uh, you don't have a lot of father. Why are we using that terminology of family? We, we, you know what I'm saying? Please understand that the family is a microcosm. So God wants to train us within the family. We honor the, the, the our, our elders there, which is our mother and our father. Sisters and brother have to get along. The parents should make sure they're learning how to get along. All well, when we come to the church, it shouldn't be something foreign to us that there's going to be some submission going on. There's going to be a gathering coming on. The family is working together to accomplish mm -hmm. a purpose. I don't know about your home, but in my house, everybody <laughs> had an assignment. Amen. You had something you're going to do. Praise God. Sometimes too. Listen, that's right. You know, and so, it, you know, it, it's your week to wash dishes. Yes, you know, sir. you, you, you going to mop. You're going to clean, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, because what? In the house, everybody has some responsibility. Now, we had responsibility outside of that. We had to go to school. My father went to work. My mother did something. We all had responsibility outside of that. But the house had to stay together. We needed everybody putting their hand in that's there, right. making it happen. Well, it, it, that's why he said, don't forsake this. Because we're there to encourage one another, build one another up. And so... I can have some ideas. It sounds real spiritual. I've been called to join, and I've had people tell me that. I, no, I've been called to go to a local church. I, I have been called to join a church. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to a different church. I visit them every week, go to a different one. And I, I'm there to encourage them. Come on now. Encourage them how? Well, well I, I'm saying that, you know, we want to <laughs> preach or speak to them or give a testimony. I don't know. 
Here's something, saints, you've got to understand. Praise God. We can have certain ideas. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to have this man. I'm going to have that ministry. Oh, that's fine. Let me tell you something. We need to have people that's a, a evangelists or prophets. They're traveling. God do things them. like that. But God wants to put us in a solitary family. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes, not all the time, people don't do that because they don't want to be corrected. They don't want to submit and so, therefore, they have a hard time submitting to other people to That's do that. Good. But let me tell you something. You can't lead other people who to do something that you don't know how to do. Really? And so that's going to be very important. That's why he sit us in there. And in the home, there's training, there's discipline, there's learning. That's the way we have to do it. Well, the church is to be that. That's why God said if you're going to see an elder, check the home first. Why? Yes. That'll give you an indication if they're ready to do something in the local church. If they ain't got that straight, if it's all tore up there, don't bring it to church. <laughs> leave, leave it right there because they need to go back and get that right. Yeah. So please understand, we can have good ideas, you know, that I don't. Now, as far as to the local house, then you have to, you know, the Lord has to show you where that is. You know, nobody can't tell you what house to go. You, That's right. You seek the Lord for you and your family. But but when we don't, that we're giving an indication to the, our children that you don't necessarily need to be a part. That is not a good message to send. Now, a D is materials. That is, we can have jobs, money, school, titles, position, status. Those things become more important to us than having God first place. God wants you to have a job. Mm -hmm. God wants you to have money. God wants many of us to go to different schools. God wants us to have certain title. Why? We're there to represent him. Certain position. God wants to place us in certain status. But if I'm making that my priority. Come on. But to do that, then I ignore God. I've had people say, you know, and I, I'm, I'm going to start coming back to church. But, you know, I'm, right now I'm working every Sunday. And I'm going to be doing that for a while, probably a year or something like this, you know. And I'm saying, wow, that's more important than you doing the work of the Lord. Well, I'm doing that on my job. What? No, 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 hold it now. All of us should, if we have a job, should be witnesses for Christ on mm -hmm, our job. Mm -hmm. But but you know what? One of the things, even on the Old Testament, he told me, he said, this day, not just sit aside, but we're going to get together and worship. We're mm -hmm. going to take some time and be with God. Keep it holy. And God wants us to understand these things about us. God is not like like Saul, he gave God some gossip, but that's not what I asked you. Yeah, come on here. Sometimes we make up our mind, I'm going to give God a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And God said, go back to my word. <laughs> Is that what I said? See, and so, and and some, some people, we're going to tie big money. We're going to give big money, but I'm not doing God. I want your life. God said, you know what? <laughs> that's not even acceptable at this point. Oui. That doesn't move me. I'm not broke. Mm -hmm. I did that for your benefit, but if you're not doing it right, it's not benefiting you right. Wee. So all of these things can become idols for us. Those, there's, there's nothing wrong with these things in and of themselves. Nothing. It's just that when we get them out of position, mm -hmm. we get them out of place, and what happens from that point on, you know what? We, we're like an idol. We're out there by ourselves. Yeah. And we can be put in deception. Now, let me say that with this, because, you know, this pandemic has come and, and you know, whatever. A lot of times we had to go and now we have the Facebook, we have, you know, YouTube and all that. Those things are great. Yeah. But please understand something. That is not what God called us to do, is sit and look at a camera. Yeah. It's not what he called us to do. We're doing this prayerfully because there are people shut in. We're doing it also pray because there's people that we're reaching other people that at this point, maybe in between churches and whatever, mm -hmm. or we're doing it for people and help those things. But God meant for you and I to be together. Yeah. All right? Now, anything else before no, I go down? Roman number three. Mankind has a need of three things. Number one, love. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, God already know we need love. Why? Because he made us. He created mankind. And love created us. God is love. And everything he does is in love. So when he created you and me, he created us in love. And that love, there's a part of us always going to desire that because of the simple fact love made us. Mm -hmm. And it's put it in place. And please understand this, that there's a part of all of us want to be loved. Yeah. I've never met somebody, I don't care if nobody loved me. <laughs> you, you, you already know right then, Let's get, we got to get them some help. Because you already know. No, we, we all want to be loved. I'm not saying we should do anything to be loved. 
but but we all want to be loved. And so Romans five and uh, um, John, I'm sorry, John three sixteen again said, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have an everlasting life." Romans five and five say, "And hope make it not a shame, because the love of God mm -hmm. is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost." which is given unto us. So this love, God said, if you need this, this is going to help settle you to know that I love you. Mm -hmm. I've placed a tremendous value on you. That's why I treat you so, so wonderful. You can't tell me you love me and don't treat me, you know, Come on. like somebody that, that you love. Amen? You, you, that's a lot of talking. And mm -hmm. what we need to understand, God has said, what God did with agape is he played about to do with it. But also, we need to take a look at uh, John three thirty six. John three thirty six. All right. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided on him. Okay. So again, under security, we got John three sixteen again, because we have some security in Christ. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Uh, and who else believe him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's security for us. But also, John 3, 36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide on him. So we have security in Christ because we're born again. Praise God. Now, finally, significance. We need to feel like we matter. Amen. And like we're doing something that's important. Uh, we, you know, just not just going and doing anything. Praise God. John 3, 16 again, we'll cover that as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. But also 1 John 3 and 2 said, Beloved, now are we sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall, uh, when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Mm -hmm. So the Bible calls us sons of God. We're the very sons of God. We're in his family. So we have significance. Praise God. The Bible Thank said that Lord. we are kings and priests yes, unto, unto God. Unto God. We, we have significance. Praise God. And please know that a lot of people out there doing a lot of things, they want significance. Praise God. They want secure. They want to feel secure. Praise God. And they want to feel love. Hallelujah. And prayerfully what God has designed is that we will first find it in our own families. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise God. So we want to go. But when we have with God, that will help us if we have it nowhere else. Praise God. So mankind has the need of those things. If we don't get these needs satisfied through God, this is D. If we don't get these things satisfied through God, ordained means we will set out to get them through carnal means. We. And so let's talk about that. Roman number four. Praise God. If you have your sheets, Roman number four. So since we have this, these needs that we meet, either we get them met by God's ordained means to get those met. If we don't by God and we're going to ignore God, we still have those needs and we'll get them met, I'm sorry, in the wrong way. Yeah. All right. Roman number four. So how do we set out to fulfill these needs by carnal means? Number one, love. So here's some means if we. We'll get through fornications. Mm -hmm. We we will we'll create perfect bodies, you know, so people will admire us and they want to talk to us. And we walk around with these bodies showing them, praise God, and, and people want us. And, you know, we, we desire it, men and women, praise God. Yeah. Well, we'll put it so, so that, that people are desirous and they want to be with us and all those things. Uh, and then, uh, praise God, also prostitution is, is one of the means of doing it. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, the, the, and again, the, the list can go on and on and on. I just want to give us an understanding that I'm going to get love wrong ways. I remember just, just uh, with ministers, Sister Anderson and I sometimes, especially to young girls, and we have talked to them, and we found out there were so many different young men, and, we, and what we found out, they didn't have a fathers in their life. And that father should have been their first love. And they're seeking for their love. But we can say the same things about the sons. Amen? If they don't get that love from their mothers and whatever, it will affect us because of what we may, I want to be loved. And so parents, let's make sure we, we, we uh, love our children and we let them know that they're loved. And they praise God and let them know that we care about them. And a lot of that stuff not was taught us. Maybe you didn't get that when you were growing up, you know, and so therefore it's hard for you to give it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if we go back to God's word and get his love, he will help us. Or, say? you know, and when you said that about fathers, either mm -hmm. they got a father with a, with a title in their life, mm -hmm. but they are not being 
a father. Mm -hmm. That's and true. And so it's a different in being inside of the same home and being a father. That's true. Now, a lot of folks have, have been raised up in the same home mm -hmm. because the parents were married. Mm -hmm. However, it still was not a father. It still was not a mother. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking for that outside of where it actually should have been shown, walked out, and manifested that was inside of the home. Absolutely. Inside of our gate is where it is tried and tested. And if it does not work there, mm -hmm. it won't work outside of the camp. So true. And the sad thing is this, that not only females, but males, Absolutely. all of them go looking for that father or that mother's love. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing, they find it in the wrong place. And it is not the love that God even uh, has ordained for it. For anyone to have to walk through. I was listening to a testimony of a young man who had lived on the street. And he was in a band of strength. And he was talking about how a group of them boys and young men at that point had got together. And how they would rob people, beat people, do stuff. And he said, I was in such pain. I was hurting. And he said that, you know what? I, I When I hit them, I, it, I felt like I owed it to somebody. Yeah. And I felt better Sad. in a sense than doing them. And so here's what happened. What he was saying without saying it, I didn't have love. And, and I needed that significant. On the street, it made me feel like I was somebody, that I was doing something. So I want us to understand these things, our needs are in us. And if we don't get it from God, we'll go at other means to get those things. All right, let's talk about uh, the last one, significance. Well, sometimes how we do that, we want larger homes. If I got a big home... I, I feel significant. You know, people go, I want to go to my house. I like entertain. I want them to see my house or my car, you know. And so I keep going for bigger and bigger vehicles, you know, more expensive vehicles and, and those type of things because it says I'm somebody. Mm -hmm. It says I have arrived. And so, you know what? My heart is not fixed at that point. I need that to make me feel like that was father. I'm somebody. Don't get me wrong. We just need to take a look at this and understand if we to make pursuit of these needs being met carnally possible. Again, we have Roman number five. So if you go back to Roman number five, society participate in order to make pursuit of these needs being carnally possible. Number one, marketing. We're talking about the three needs being met. So society know how, they know we have the need. So number one, marketing. By stimulating the passion of these desires beyond normal levels. What marketing does is play something over and over again, trying to create a desire for that. You know, for this food, whether it's a car, whether it's relationship, whether it's a, a vacation, they play it over and over again, and they're stimulating yeah. that desire, yeah. praise God, to cause us to want these things. Uh, B, government relaxes laws in order to allow mankind to legally pursue these desires. There's some things that we got that are wrong. They're against God's word. So government will come in and change the law, and they say, okay, it's okay now. It's mm -hmm. right. No, it's not okay with God's word. It's right. But, but it says, okay. So now people feel uh, a license that they can, you know, that they can do those things. The church, by not preaching against these unlawful desires. We don't want to make people mad. We want to preach what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, the church is participating in uh, uh, causing them to go and try to get these needs met in an illegal way. So the marketing, government, the church. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to stop right now and pray. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> and for those of you on the live stream, mm -hmm. began to pray as well. Mm -hmm. I, I know this word is being fought in the heavenly realm, mm -hmm. but we win. So, Father, we just thank you thank right you, now Lord. in the thank name you. of Jesus yes. that every outlet is working the way in which it has been are ordained and predestined to work. Yes. We say that this word will go forth under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Father. So we say clear the airway now yes, in the name Lord of God. Jesus. Hallelujah. The internet, everything that has anything to do with Praise this broadcast. God. Hallelujah. And we thank you that it is done in Jesus' name because you're the governor. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, Praise thank God. You, Lord God. All right. We're also down to Roman number five and D as in David. Law enforcement by not actively prosecuting offenders of laws on the books. So, again, this allowed people to do more of these things or to try to get these needs met illegally. So, we, we, we include everybody. We said marketing. We said government. We said the church is also and also law enforcement mm -hmm. when we don't actively prosecute. 
uh, these laws, they're already on the book, but we don't actually prosecute those. All right? Let's go down to Roman number six. Paul refers to covetedness as idolatry. We oui. Covetedness, this is A, is to have a strong desire for something that belongs to another. Let me say it again. Covetedness is to have a strong desire for something that belongs to another. Ephesians 5, 5 through 6 said, For this you know, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, nor covetous man, watch now, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God wow. upon the children of disobedience. So there Paul in Ephesians said, don't know about fool you now. They be talking a lot of stuff, but here's the situation. Mm -hmm. All right. Under B, Colossians, Colossians 3 and 5, mortify therefore the members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetedness. He says it again, which is idolatry. Covenant is, is that we want to get something that rightfully doesn't belong to us. It belongs to somebody else. Mm -hmm. A person that covets and a person that worship are the same because both of them worship gold, silver, and materials in their hearts. In other words, a person that's covet, they are worshiping that. That becomes more important to them than yeah, what God has it. said, right? And so they become an their, their idolatry because this has become more important to me than God. This pursuing this thing. If I look at another woman, I know she's already married and I want to go there and be with that woman. I'm trying to do everything I can. I've already, that's idolatry because of the simple fact I want what God has already said that I shouldn't have. But at this point, I'm moving God out of the way. I'm making myself God and I'm going to please me. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, under 6B, a person that covers and a person that worship again are the same because of both of them worship gold, silver material in their heart. C, both give the affection and love that belongs to God to something else. Mm -hmm. Both give the affection and love that belongs to God to something else. All right. And Roman number seven. This strong desire for something that belongs to others will cause us to break several of the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20, 13 through 17. Let me read these. So uh, let me say Exodus it again. Exodus 20, say again if you will. Exodus 20th chapter, verse 13 through verse 17. And this strong desire for something that belongs to others will cause us to break several of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Mm. Are there people out there killing other people to get something that they want, that they have? 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. thy neighbors. Are there people out there lying on other folks so they can? Yes. 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet his manservant, his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass or anything that is thy neighbor. So you see, covenants will cause us to break so many of the different commandments that God has commanded not to. Roman number eight, even good things can be idols. Yes, come on. Wow. Let me read 2 King 18, 1 through 4. I got the script out. Now listen, it goes through this, but I will get to one piece and I want to show you what that is. This is now. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother name also was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places. And he break down the images. He cut down the groves. And he break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto, for unto those days the children of Israel <clears throat> excuse me, did burn incense to it. And he called it Nuhushtan. And that means the brass. Now, here's something that God used 
that when the children of Israel, the, the serpents come in and bite them, they put this and build this and put it up. And God said, whoever look upon this shall be healed. Mm -hmm. But now, hundreds of years later, they're they are burning incense to it. They are worshiping this thing like it's going to protect them. So that which was good has been turned into an idol. And sometimes if we're not cautious, we can take something that's good and turn it into an idol. More than anything, mm -hmm. we can take something and put it on us and say, this will protect me. And we'll take that, won't let nobody touch it, don't get nowhere near and all that and all that. And God has said, I'm your protector. Come on. I'm the Lord God, your protector. Praise God. Now, if you have something that reminds you of him, that's fine. But if you are trusting that, if you don't have it, I can't go. I can't. I don't have my lucky charm. I don't have this. That's an idol. God is your protector. All right. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. And finally, Roman number nine, flee idolatry. First Corinthians 10, 6 to 14. Now these things were our now these things were our example. To the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Verse 7. Need to be idolaters as they were, as some of them, as it is written that people sat down to eat and drink, rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them did commit it, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Mm -hmm. Murmur means you come, they come constantly complaining. complaining. And they do not trusting God. Again, a lot of these things are tests. Now all of these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition, upon which the end of the world has come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. You know what he's saying? There's a lot of stuff we can be doing and not realize that we're breaking God's law, or we're making, uh, we're idolaters, if mm -hmm. you will. We're covetous. Now, all of these things happen unto them, for example, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world has come. Verse 12, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand. Take heed, lest he fall. Yes. There has no temptation taking you, but such is coming to Come man. On, say that again. God is faithful. None of it. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that that you are able. Yes, I believe But that. will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Mm -hmm. That you may be able to bear it. Thank you, Lord God. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from, look at this, idolatry. All of it, he talked about it. He said, listen, listen. Idolatry is when you place something more to God than anything else. Mm -mm -mm. All right? That's all I have for you. Praise God. You know, and I think this, in the closing of this, anything that we've put before God mm -hmm. and what he has said in his word for us to do, <coughs> Excuse me. it becomes idolatry. Mm -hmm. uh, it might not look like it. It might not feel like it. Nobody else might not call it out by name. But God's word says I would not allow you or anyone else to have any other God, anything other thing that they bow down to, worship, uh, serve more, uh, want to make them please more than me. He calls it idolatry. He does. And we have to call it the same thing. I tell you what, it's a very interesting uh, lesson tonight mm -hmm. uh, uh, of what idolatry is and how we have at times not seen it in the light of what God sees it as. And so I'm very grateful. Um, and that last part, what you just read, flee mm -hmm. adultery. And what the word says that there is nothing that has come to you and I. Because, you know, sometimes we try to make it look like, you know, it's just for me. Mm -hmm. And he says there's nothing mm -mm. that is such as coming to any other man. But he's already given us a way of escape. We've got to look for it. Very, very true. And you know what? We're living in a time now that Satan is pouring it on. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, here's the time that the true tests are coming. And we're going to see who really belongs to the Lord and who don't. Yeah. Because the children of God should be correctable. That's me. That's you. That's all of us. All of us. Because that's the thing that's going to be our safety is obedience. Amen. That's what got Saul in trouble. He, God gave him what to do, but he did what he thought he should do. Mm -hmm. Even though he knew what the word said, he went on and did what he thought would do. This would be better at this point in time. And God has said, no, what I told you to do, 
would be better. And so we have got to come back and say, Lord, this is your word. God, this is what I want to do. Why? There's no safer place than to yes, be in the will of God. On. There's no safer place than to be in the will of God. All right. And you know, when you go mm -hmm. back to, the, I think it's Proverbs 3, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the entire Proverbs 3, but I, the, the word of God, that when it says in all of our ways, acknowledge him. Come on. That he will direct our very path. Praise God. Uh, he is not saying that in order for us to do, get out there and do stuff and then, okay, I'm going to acknowledge God now. No, he said, if you would bring me in on at the first beginning, then I will be able to direct whatever it is that is going on with you and I. And that's what we have to come back to doing. And to me, when I really read that and re hear it again tonight, mm -hmm. acknowledge me. What do you say, Lord? That's all I want to do is not my will, as Jesus said, but thy will, O God. And till we come to that place, we still think we can do it. Not my will, O God, but thy will be done. You know, uh, early on, even in this, but the Lord said, the person that trusts in the arms of flesh. <laughs> he talks about how fully. And th that means your flesh, too. Mm -hmm. That means my flesh. That means I'm going to trust in me. And God is saying, you, you don't understand. Listen to me. I'm here to be your God. And Sister Henderson said something, said something very important. Acknowledge me in all your ways so that I can direct your path. I want to keep you on a safe path. I want to keep you peaceful. I want to keep your hearts at peace. I want to do, I don't care what you're facing, I can give you peace. Yeah. I will keep you in a perfect peace. You keep your mind stayed on um, me. Well, how do I keep my mind stayed on him? By acknowledging him. Yes, acknowledging what his word said. And then otherwise I get frustrated. I'm blaming God. I'm blaming everybody else. And I'm the one that's not in peace because I refuse to trust God. I put my trust in myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, now maybe you're here and you're listening to me and you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Well, we can get that taken care of tonight. Pray you got today. Whenever you're seeing this, we can get that straight now right, right away. Now. <laughs> Why? Because the Lord loves you. He didn't make it hard for you and I to get saved. Praise God. It's just believing it. Sometimes it seems so simple. Like, is that all? The Lord said, I didn't, wasn't trying to keep you out. Mm -hmm. I want to get you in. Praise God. So what well, the word of the Lord says that, amen, we need to believe on the Lord Jesus. That means believe that God sent Jesus to die on the cross and pay the full price for all of our sin. That God wants you and me into the kingdom of God. And so he said, I made it simple. If you'll just accept this free gift, no. I, I'm going to become your Lord, though, Lord of your life and, and the master of your life. But I promise you, I got something good for you. All right. So let me just pray for those who may have never made the Lord the Lord of their life. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. As the different individuals are hearing this and whenever they're hearing it, Lord, help them to know that you love them yes, thank and you. that you thank want you, them to be a part of your family, that you have a wonderful plan for their life. Amen. Doesn't matter how they got here. They're here. And God, you wanted them here mm -hmm. and you have something special for them. But Father, pray that you draw them because we know that only you can draw. And Lord, we come to you this day and we said, draw. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, if that you are ready, we can take care of this right now. Praise God. I, I, I believe God's been dealing with your heart about this. I believe that you're saying, well, I don't know. This is a troubled time and all. And it is. But God said, listen, trust in me. You believe in me? Praise God. I will take your life. Mm -hmm. and I will not only be your protector, your provider, but I want to take you into heaven with, and, and to the glory of God to be with me. All right, let me just pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank I just you, thank Lord. you for that. I thank you for all, all what you're dealing with the hearts now. Thank you that you're drawing them as we just pray. I believe now they're ready, Lord, to receive. All right, now if you're ready, I want to lead mm -hmm. you in a prayer. Just say the words won't save you now. But if you will believe with your heart this very moment that you're listening, that you're Thank confessing you, anything, God will save you. Amen. All of us had to come this way. All right, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And then if you'll repeat after me, not trusting in me, but you're trusting in the Lord God. All right? Father, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Come on. And that he died on the cross and paid the full price for my sins. I believe that he was buried and he rose again from the dead. Come on, come on. And I believe 
if I would invite Jesus come into my heart and to become my Lord and my Savior, that he'll do it this very moment. Mm -hmm. So because I believe, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change my life. I invite you to be my Lord yes. and my Savior. And I thank you for hearing my prayer you, right Lord. now. Thank you. Thank and you. right now, according to your word, I'm saved. Mm -hmm. All right. Praise God. Well, that's all it takes now. As long as you mm -hmm. meant it, watch the Lord. Now he's about to do some powerful <laughs> things. Praise God. Well, Brian, help me celebrate those who came thank to the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. We give God praise and thanksgiving for you, mm -hmm. Sister Henderson, if you will. Praise God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Amen. And we truly are applauding what God, we believe, has done. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you would make a decision to give your life to the Lord. The angels are rejoicing, so we're doing the same Amen. exact Amen. Praise thing. God. Hallelujah. If you have made that commitment to, to the Lord Jesus, all you need to do, if you're desiring to get what we call some growth material, is to send your information over by clicking on either inside of, if you're on the live right now, you just place that information right there. Mm -hmm. Or you can send a note over to info, I-N-F-O, at BerenFamilyWorshipCenter.org. Or you can call the ministry, 414-873-8687. Mm -hmm. Again, 414-873-8687. Or you can go right out to the website of Beren Family worshipcenter.org on that home page there's a salvation button you can just click right there and that'll get you over into the proper area inside of the ministry and I will assure you someone will follow up with you mm -hmm. uh, the next uh, business day that we're in the office and they will make contact with you in order to get uh, that information into your hand and I want to say a loud shout out mm -hmm. welcome to the kingdom of God amen you got praise. a new family praise God <laughs> amen 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 what a blessing what a privilege mm -hmm. uh, to hear the word on idolatry mm -hmm. deception of the heart mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> anyway uh, I want to do a few of these announcements yes all right first of all I want to give an update and the reason I'm giving it here is because we started out last Wednesday asking that we would begin to pray for the initials MCMD. Mm. They are now out of the hospital as of yesterday. Praise the Lord. Asking that you would continue to be praying mm. for those initials uh, as they walk through, uh, through the journey that they are going through right now. And I'll leave it at that. And I want to thank you for praying. We believe that it is the prayers of the righteous. Is the reason that they've come through on the other side. Mm -hmm. And so we're very grateful. Also inviting you to uh, join our early morning 5 a.m. Central Standard Time uh, prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, this Friday morning, we'll be praying from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. Inside of the live, they're placing that information, or you can go to the website and get it as well. And then next week, uh, part four, using God's name in vain. Oh boy. When I read that title uh, the day uh, talking with the office and looking at us and wow, wow, using God's name in vain. And so that is already out on the website. If you desire to go on and get those uh, notes mm -hmm. uh, while you can study along with us, mm -hmm. we really would appreciate you doing just that. And I started out and I'm going to close it the same way for me. Happy birthday to one Sister Anna Martini. Goosey, goosey. <laughs> We're going to do it, Pastor? No, you, 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 you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Feliz complainos. I know that sounds good, did not it? Amen. Happy birthday to you, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I pray your day has been absolutely just wonderful. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Back into your hands. All right. Well, thank you so much again for joining us, and praise God. We're going to continue to pray amen and believe god and so thank you again for everyone that taking time and we're getting this word and we're going to let god continue to draw us closer to him all right well let's pray father thank you for thank this you, time Lord. we thank you for your word that's truth god and mm -hmm. you said we'll know that truth and that truth makes us free yes we agree with that we say amen it is so praise god so thank you for speaking to our hearts this day and Holy Spirit, custom fit this word for each Thank one of Lord. us because there's some area I know that I do need it. I believe all of us need some part of it. 
But Lord, we just thank you for working in our hearts and minds, both the willing to do of your good pleasure. Be glorified, we do pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Have an absolute wonderful and safe rest of your week. Mm -hmm. And everything that you do, stay in prayer. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God.